Hello, this is the video recording for fast incremental capacity peak identification in lithium ion batteries using pulse injection aided machine learning. I'm Alan, presenting on behalf of me and Professor Prindle. They're part of the Motor Drives and Power Electronics Laboratory in Columbia. This is for the 2022 ECCE conference. So the big picture is uh, that lithium ion batteries lose capacity with use, right? And so this is battery degradation and we hope that fast and detailed degradation diagnostics can increase uh, battery health and performance. So um, not only getting it right, but getting it fast. So having as accurate information as possible um, in as shortest time in the, the shortest time possible. Uh, so this is a four part presentation. I'm just going to give an overview of battery degradation and then discuss uh, what incremental capacity analysis actually is, the traditional way of getting it. Um, and then I'll describe what our method is, pulse injection aided machine learning, which, have, which we have um, described in an earlier paper, but haven't uh, applied to ICA before. Uh, and then uh, we'll show some results and, and then conclude. So again, uh, ICA is a classic technique for analyzing degradation. It's been used for many years now and its basic principles are pretty well known. Uh, so it all starts from the pseudo open circuit voltage. So this is uh, just a slow discharge from full. So for example, you could take a C over 20 uh, C rate. And so you'd have a curve look that would look something like the one here. So uh, as the remaining capacity Q uh, decreases, your voltage decreases. And of course, we know that this is a, a nonlinear relationship. So the incremental capacity curve is simply the inverse derivative of the uh, pseudo OCV. So uh, you sort of flip the axes around and then uh, you, you obtain these curves. And each peak sort of corresponds to a plateau in the P OCV. Okay. So what that plateau or peak uh, in the ICA actually represents is uh, a phase transition. So this is a diagram sort of adapted from uh, Du Barry, uh, who really did a lot of work in ICA. But so each peak sort of represents a different area in the phase transitions of these electrodes. So uh, I won't go into detail of what exactly the, the phases are, but um, essentially uh, each peak gives you information about the electrode's level of degradation. Right? And that's why the peaks change over time. And that's why they're useful for understanding uh, degradation modes, because uh, they give you uh, information uh, directly relating to the electrode. And from that, you can uh, you can estimate the loss of lithium inventory, for example, or the uh, loss of active material. And of course, all of this is due to uh, degradation mechanisms, which um, include you know, like solid electrolyte interface formation or uh, electrode fracture or, or um, you know, uh, realignment of uh, the, uh, the lattice structure and, and things like that. And so anyway, so each sort of rectangle on in these, in this diagram just represents a different uh, part of the electrode's behavior as the state of charge um, goes from zero to one or as the voltage varies. Um, so anyway, you can, this, it just shows you how as lithium ions go between the two electrodes, as they lithiate and delithiate, um, you can tell different things about their structure and their level of degradation. And that's why ICA is so important. But again, so ICA is very cool, but it, it doesn't, you can't really use it in real time. It, it takes too much time to, to perform. Nobody has 20 hours to, to spare in, in a classic 
sort of electric vehicle application, let alone, um, or even a grid application for that matter. So what we're proposing is uh, using a short pulse to obtain the key IC features, so the key features of the incremental capacity curve. And, and that's where uh, pulse injection agent machine learning comes in. Uh, and we just want to note that we use two certain types of machine learning, so one very basic one like ridge regression, and then also the more powerful uh, neural network. And we're going to compare the two uh, to get a feel for how they differ. So pulses, just taking a step back, so pulses are commonly used to measure the impedance, the overpotentials, the transient dynamics of the battery cell. Uh, and those are related to the kinetic parameters of the of the cell, which are not traditionally related directly related to ICA. So it's tended it's been the tendency to view kinetic parameters as separate from the incremental capacity parameters. So the impedance is traditionally viewed as a completely separate and um, just a completely separate degradation mode as the uh, electrode parameters such as the loss of active material or lithium inventory. So, so you wouldn't think necessarily that a pulse could tell you something about the electrodes. You might be able to tell something about the uh, the ion transport in the battery, which of course is affected by the electrodes, but uh, in, in the frameworks that have been proposed so far, uh, you the pulse isn't really the best way to look at uh, capacity loss or degradation, for example. Even though we do know that impedance increases with degradation, it's always been viewed as a separate uh, relationship compared to the electrodes. But what we're proposing is, well, we do all this battery cycling offline, so we apply the stress factors, pseudo-OCV, pulse injection, and then we can obtain a fully trained machine learning model that will give us the IC features, the incremental capacity peaks or extrema, directly from the pulse. Okay, and the first machine learning model we use is ridge regression. Uh, so it's it's essentially an advanced form of least squares, or it is least squares, but you just have a sort of bias term represented by lambda that increases. Uh, uh, generalization and the neural network is uh, again so just many layers of nodes and you put in your pulse data and then uh, through several matrix transformations that kind of represent the layers and the nodes you get uh, your output and so yeah we split the data 64% or 80% for training 20% for testing okay so what does our data look like? What are our results? So we cycled six cells, three cells for each stressor. So one stressor, so stressor one was at low temperature. So it the cells degraded much faster. Um, and the stressor two, the cells were at higher temperature. Uh, I also have to note that the stressor one cells were cycled at low voltage. Um, so from zero to 50% state of charge, uh, and then stressor two were cycled from 50 to 100% state of charge. So there's sort of two things going on here, but the key is that they're very different stress factors, um, and of course they resulted in very different uh, degradation patterns. And you can also see how there's branching, very distinct branching in the stressor two cells. So they all kind of uh, degraded at different they pass that knee point at very different times. So another thing to keep to know is that, so for each point in this diagram, uh, we applied, there is a corresponding pseudo OCV curve and there is a corresponding pulse train. So a set of pulses from zero to one state of charge. So, uh, so you can see that there's really a wide variety of data, at many states, not of health, of health and of charge. So the first thing we do uh, to the pulse response is subtract the mean of each pulse. So we can remove the bias and we can obtain, 
obtain a relatively normalized data set. So this is pretty clean pulse data. So this is one C rate, lasts two minutes long, and you can see how as the cycles increase or change, so the cycle numbers are actually a little off here, but you can see anyway how as the cycle numbers change, the pulse shape, the shapes become very different. And the task of machine learning is to match the pulse to the corresponding incremental capacities, incremental, incremental capacity peaks. So this is what the IC curves look like. So this is stressor one, the, the low temperature. Uh, you can see how the extrema vary over time. And then you can see uh, the high temperature uh, incremental capacity curves, and you can see how the extrema are very different, but still, uh, and you can see how they they also branch out um, similar to the overall capacity curve. And this is why uh, IC curves are such good predictors of state of health. Um, so anyway, so how does machine learning actually perform? So if we feed in the pulses, what we get out, so this is for both stress factors combined. So we can see that ridge regression gets the general idea. So it kind of understands what's going on, but it's unable to get the full picture. So ex especially for extrema one, uh, for some reason it, it's it, it's very uh, pre it's pretty bad at actually estimating the two trends. But for three, five, and seven, ridge regression can does identify some sort of uh, trend, but of course the neural network is much much better. So um, it it is not only able to distinguish between the, the two stress factors, and we didn't give it any information besides the pulse voltage, but the neural network is also able to to a certain extent understand the branching of the of the cells. So there we go. And then, so if we just look at S2 results at all the extrema, we can see ridge regression again gets the general idea. Um, but the neural network is, is much, much better at identifying the true trend um, from only the pulse. So again, this is using a two minute pulse. Uh, so we're actually, let's just have a look at the comparisons first. So we're only, we're estimating the, uh, the, all the extrema, and we assume that the peaks stay in the same spot, um, which is pretty, it's a good assumption because the, they don't move very much. Um, we can see the neural network is consistently better and much less sensitive to voltage variation. So it doesn't, it, it can predict the peaks pretty well regardless of which peak it is. Um, so yes, the main takeaway here is that, We've used a two minute pulse to, and in fact, this is 20 hours. We've used a two minute pulse to obtain data that is typically only possible to be obtained in tens of hours. And we don't feed in the, the, anything else to the machine learning models besides the pulse voltage. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so it's robust against all these cycling protocols. Um, it's multiple temperatures and, and the implication here is that pulses encode phase transitions. And this is not easy, not easily uncovered by ridge regression, but we've shown that the neural network can directly link, uh, a pulse, a very short pulse to the battery degradation level. Uh, so What's going on here, we believe, is that the neural network is learning some sort of fundamental battery physics that's able to tie, so it's able to model essentially in some way or understand that a certain degradation level is going to also produce a very different pulse. And even though this pulse voltage might not be immediately distinguishable using a, uh, a less powerful method, um, it can still tie that back. Uh, and this suggests we think that uh, PM also, pulse injection aided machine learning, could possibly be used to perform active diagnosis. So maybe we could use this in real time. 
uh, okay, so and that's all the presentation, and I hope, uh, yeah, please do get in touch uh, for any questions.